We're back for a live five o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel. Welcome to Life in the Law on Think Tech. Our show today is called Upcoming Issues for the 2017 Legislature. I want to talk about how many of them have to do with money. That's important. Our guest for the show is Bob Toyofuku, one of Hawaii's leading lobbyists. Thank you for participating and welcome to the show, Bob. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So here's some background for our discussion. The legislature opens on January 18th. What is that? Next week? Uh, when the public uh, is welcome to come down and participate in the opening festivities. Uh, in the four months that follow, it'll consider literally thousands of bills. What will these bills cover? Do they cover the right things? And will they have a good effect on our state government and our state? How many of them are money bills? And why are money bills important and different? Nobody follows these questions more closely than Bob Toyofuku, who has been a leading lawyer and lobbyist in Hawaii from before many of our listeners were born. Sorry about that, Bob. That's true. <laughs> we should follow what happens in this legislature. It's physically in the center of Honolulu, not hard to visit and attend the sessions and hearings where the sausage is being made. On the other hand, you know, let's remember that only 40% of the people in Hawaii vote. Sorry about that even in remarkable elections like the one this past November. What I mean to say is that we need to follow what goes on in our government. Uh, our government is us. We need to satisfy ourselves that our officials are doing the right and prudent thing and not doing the wrong thing. So let's listen carefully while Bob Toyofuku gives us a handle on what's up in this session. So Bob, it's great to have you here. Thank Thanks you. For coming down. So give us a handle. Uh, what, is, what is hot this year? Where is the legislature going to spend time and you know, and thought process, what, what are they going to be considering? Well, uh, keep in mind that this is a budget session. And so that is always a key issue uh, in this odd number year. And uh, because the session really goes 2017, 2018. And they must deal with all of the money issues. And basically, it is the Finance Committee in the House and the Ways and Com Means Committee uh, in the Senate. So currently, both committees are having informational briefings where the various departments come before the committees and talk about their particular budget and get questioned. Uh, one of the things that recently came up in this morning Star Advertiser, as a matter of fact, Jay, was that it was revealed that the uh, ERS, uh, the retirement system, uh, has ballooned up to about a $12 billion shortfall. So unfunded, unfunded liability. liability. Because the, they, they, they must have that money. They're, they're, by law, they should have that money right. to pay the retirees. That's yeah. right. And so uh, they are now saying that maybe they have to put in close to $300 million a year uh, from taxpayer funds, which is the revenue coming into the state, to uh, make up the shortfall. So and that's going to be it a, will take many years, oh, many to, years. to catch up. Many yeah. years. So, but that's going to be one of the major issues. Uh, but also, they have to look at the budget for the judiciary, the budget for all of the departments. So, the, a lot of the focus will be on the finance and and ways and means committee. Are we in decent shape? I mean, last year we had. A surplus, right? Yes. I think it was a billion dollar surplus. Yes. Um, and the question I was asked in Civil Beat, whatever happened to it? And wh what do we expect for this year? I understand that tax revenues are not as high this year as they were last year. That's another issue that came up is that the uh, Council of Revenues is projecting a lesser amount coming in of revenues. And so that's a problem together with now they need more money for the unfunded liability. Mm. So that's, a, that's an issue. Plus, you have um, all of these different uh, groups, organizations, and others that get partially or totally funded by the state that need more money. And, Talk and about grants and aid? No, not only grants and aid, but let's assume that uh, you take the judiciary, which is a third branch oh, of sure. government, right? They may need more judges. So what that requires is more money for their budget. So all of these things... Uh, um, happen. You know, the uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority is partially funded, right? So they may have different ideas in asking for more funding, you know? I just so, wonder if anybody comes around, you know, in a given year and says, you know, we got X amount last year, but things have gone really well, and you don't need us so much anymore this year, so why don't you give us one quarter of that now? I have never, <laughs> ever heard of that happening. 
<laughs> but, but they may ask a question. Well, yeah. how much did you make? Last? I mean, did you save any money? You know, uh, and the legislators may ask that. Yeah, but yeah. I've never heard anybody <laughs> saying, you know, I don't think we need any more uh, an increase. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine. We're doing good, you know. But, and the, the other thing, Jay, is along the money issue, um, the county, City and County of Honolulu, is Mayor Caldwell and uh, new Council Chair Menor. They're going to come in and try to persuade the legislature to increase not, excuse me, not increased, extend the half percent general excise tax. And they're going to say we need that in order to uh, appropriately fund the rail so we can take the rail to Ala Moana, mm -hmm. together with the stations that have been planned. Now, I have heard of one alternative plan. I don't know if it's out there. It may have been. But whether uh, in order to stay within the budget, uh, that's already been uh, allocated, you know, which was what about six billion now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or six point five. Uh, whether they well, for rail for rail, excuse yeah. me. Whether the they state could, budget in general is like eleven or twelve billion. Oh yeah, more, something more, like that. More than, yeah, more than that. More than that, I think. And then they um, whether they would stop the rail or consider stopping the rail in downtown at, at Aloha Tower, that area, and uh, whether that would allow them to stay within the budget, what it does to some of the stations that have been planned, whether they have to delete some of the stations, I'm not sure. But I've heard about that as a possibility. It's a hard one. You know, Very hard. It, it pushes against the, the frontier of whether we can afford this in general. Well, I mean, the concern of the people that opposed the rail to begin with was that um, down the road, you know, how are we going to afford to maintain it? Aside from the construction costs, you know, how are we going to maintain the operation of the rail? And then, you, you, you know, we had constant problems come up with this project. Uh, and, you know, some people in the legislature, I think, feel it is, it is the city and county of Honolulu's issue and not just the state as a whole. And so even though the legislature had uh, agreed to uh, increase the general excise tax, to help pay for the rail. Now they're going to consider, do we want to extend? Some people want to make it permanent. Some people want to increase it. So we'll see what happens. Is there any, um, is there any push on the notion of making it uh, statewide and not just in, uh, in uh, Oahu? I had heard that, but I am sure if there's a push to make the increase you're talking about, right, or the extension statewide, yeah. Yeah. then I am sure the neighbor island legislators would push back pretty hard. Yeah. And, and so, and the neighbor island legislators have a lot of clout. And so, I don't know if that can happen. Yeah. And there's a legal Politically. issue about that, too. Yes. Uh, whether you can yes. do that. You can take one county, put all the money in one county, right. and charge the other right. county. Because it's part. truly not. And people, you can argue, well, it's somewhat statewide. When somebody from Maui comes to uh, Honolulu, they can take the rail. But <laughs> where are they going? Yeah, yeah. really. So, yeah. The other thing I've heard is uh, we had Randy Roth, uh, you know, Professor oh, yes, Randy I know Roth Randy. Um, Law School, uh, yeah. who, who, you know, who has taken positions and written articles about rail as, and other public issues. Um, and one of the things he mentioned is that uh, where before, when this was originally established, uh, there was an override of something like 10 percent, that the state would get 10 percent yes. for collecting and distributing the extra gross excise tax. But now the bill contains a higher percentage. Uh, or might contain a higher percentage, and that, right. that could get pushed back too, no? Yes, yes. And, you know, of course, the city is going to say, we want the 10 percent. You don't need the 10 percent. But I doubt very much that the legislators will say, okay, we'll give up the 10 percent. <laughs> of, course, of course, you know, when one asks, mm. why isn't this covered on a county property tax basis? Uh -huh. uh, because that's where it's happening at the county level. That's right. Why not just, and, and you know, when you compare uh, the gross excise, which is regressive, clearly regressive, against the property tax increase. You know, property tax seems very reasonable, and it's not regressive. Um, so what about that? On the other hand, that's politically hot. Um, exactly. <laughs> and that you, you just answered the question. It's political. <clears throat> and for the mayor or the city council to say, you know, we're going to have to fund this with property tax. We're going to increase your property tax by X percent. You know that 
the property owners will scream. Everybody will start calling the mayor and <laughs> start calling the city council, and nobody wants to touch that. So it's easier to raise the gross excise. It's easier to say, you know, legislators, please help us, you know, on this thing. Yeah. It's political. Yeah. So what about what about the rest of it? I mean, it's, that, that would make it sort of revenue neutral in terms of paying for rail. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 would, it would help. It would help <clears throat> pay for rail. And presumably, you know, then the other problems in the budget would remain sort of untouched by rail, I guess. You know, in other words, that would have no effect on the budget in general. It would be really raising money in order to pay for rail at the city level. Yeah. Right. Ex except, you know, the what, what the... Uh, Finance and, and uh, Ways and Means chairs and the members look at is they look at down the road, the future too, not just, you know, tomorrow or five years. And so they have to gauge, you know, what is the impact of extending it or making it permanent down the road. And so that's, that's an issue that that uh, the budget committees really will look at. Yeah, and you want to look at the, the, the health of the state, the economy of the state, yeah. the, the tax arrangement in the state in general when you make these decisions. Exactly, yeah. and you know, uh, I'll talk about it uh, again, but you know, I know that uh, with what's going on on the national level, right, and the possible repeal without a current replacement of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, then that could affect Medicaid and Medicare, especially Medicaid, which is partially funded by the state and the federal government. Mm. So is that going to increase the amount that the state has to throw in to take care of Medicaid yeah. beneficiaries? Yeah. And so, you know, they have to look at all of this and who knows what's going to happen. That's sort of like we have to see what the Congress is going to do. But I know that certain legislators are already looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and this could happen. This will happen. You know, a after the legislative <clears throat> session begins. Yes. And after uh, Trump is um, is uh, um, inaugurated, sworn in, inaugurated, sworn in. inaugurated. Yeah, right. I'm blocking. <laughs> <laughs> right. So and so it'll happen in the middle of the session. You don't know exactly what he's going to do, and or what has to be done to compensate for what he does. Right. And so somebody will have to come up with some ideas. Yeah. In the middle of the session. Right. This is this is. Um, you know what they say, uh, vigilance is... is <laughs> and, and so, you know, what can happen, you know, as part of the legislative process, that let's assume that it something happens negatively that adversely affects the state uh, on Medicaid because of the repeal of uh, Affordable Care Act. Let's assume it happens in April. And they're going to adjourn or scheduled to adjourn on May 4. Then, if it's necessary, the governor or two-thirds of the, of the uh, legislature can call themselves back into special session to take care of this. To take care of meaning that... Well, yeah. let's assume they have to kick in more money yeah. and it's already allocated, yeah. it's not enough. Big, big problem B then. Big problem. So looking forward, they have to consider all of these things as to how they allocate the money for the budget. Yeah. And so it's tough. Like, I know that there are certain... Uh, groups are going in for tax credits or an extension of tax credits. Well, I know they're going to have to look at everything, you know, and that's part of the budget process. That's the hardest part, isn't it? Yes. The money bills and the, and trying to keep the um, the budget square. Let's take a short break, Bob. Oh, okay. Bob Toyofuku, Hawaii Advocates. Uh, we're talking about the issues in the 2017 legislature. We'll be right back. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Mark Shklov and I'm the host of Law Across the Sea. And Law Across the Sea is a program that brings attorneys who have traveled across the sea and live in Hawaii or are staying in Hawaii for a time to talk about their travels, where they're from, where they're going, and bring it all together because really we're all connected some way although we travel across the sea. So I hope that you'll tune in and watch our program. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. With, uh, We're back. We're live with Bob Toyofuku, uh, a premier lobbyist in Hawaii, uh, Hawaii Advocates. 
Um, and he's very familiar with the issues that come up in the legislature and this year especially, uh, 2017. And uh, let's go to some of the other issues, Bob. Uh, it used to be called Death with Dignity. Now it's called Aid in Dying. What's yes. that about? Um, the uh, a, a group called Compassion and Choices are uh, going to introduce, uh, have in legislation introduced to provide a choice for terminally ill patients to obtain medication at, at their uh, discretion and their choice to self-administer uh, to uh, hasten their, their passing it's a copy on. of the Oregon bill? It's, the Oregon it's not quite the Oregon bill, but the Oregon, Oregon was the first state that had the so-called death with dignity. Yeah. And uh, Washington has it, California passed it, uh, Vermont. Uh, Washington DC just passed it, but it has to be approved mm -hmm. and Colorado. So, and there are many, many states that are uh, considering introducing legislation to afford terminally ill patients the opportunity to uh, really, it's, it's the people that have a very painful last six months or so. And th th you wanna give them the choice to uh, hasten their demise, so to speak, you know, and uh, that's what this bill is It all about. seems like the enlightened way, but uh, it, it's run into snags over many legislature, legislative sessions. Yes. And, and <clears throat> some people have been trying to get a bill like that through for decades. What, what's the opposition to it? Well, I mean, you know, certain, uh, previously uh, certain members or the medical profession um, uh, were opposed. I think in California there was a, uh, a change where the medical profession stayed neutral. And um, there are also certain religious groups that feel it's not right. And, you know, I'm sure that there'll be opposition uh, in those sectors, but um, there, there's a, a reason for this. And it is, is a choice on the part of the person requesting. Uh, there are safeguards put in, and it's a choice on the part of a physician to participate or not. Mm. So, but it, it, people that, when you listen to, to family members uh, that have really, really suffered uh, a very painful death, uh, they all really support this. And a recent poll that uh, the Compassion and Choices took, 80% of, of the population in Hawaii across the board support this. This is definitely one to watch. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we'll see how this, this uh, measure proceeds in the legislature. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's one. Let's talk about uh, doctor shortages. Can we talk about doctor shortages? You know, uh, Dr. Kelly Withy at the uh, University of Hawaii she's Med She's been School. on this show. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, she's yeah. great. Yeah. So she has been doing statistical studies on doctor shortages in all the different specialties, including internal medicine and family practice. And so <clears throat> one of the uh, problems, I guess, you know, that whether the legislature would get more involved, and they have tried. Uh, for example, uh, if you forgive a, a loan to a person, say from the Big Island who is from Hilo and agrees to go back to Hilo for five years or so. Uh, the educational know, loan. Yes, the educational loan. Uh, that's a forgiveness thing. So that's one method. But one of the things that I've talked to Kelly and uh, also uh, Chris Flanders, who's the executive director of Hawaii Medical Association, to also look at other alternatives. One of the problems is that it's very hard to recruit uh, doctors to uh, the neighbor islands. Various reasons, nothing wrong with the neighbor islands. We all love the neighbor islands, but it's a matter of economics in certain areas. If you go into a very rural area and you're in a very small specialty, you know, you're not going to have the business. So how do you really make a living, right? And um, the other issue is that you need support services. You need not just a, a cardiac surgeon, you need a cardiologist, you need advanced practice nurses, you need anesthesiologists, you need good hospital equipment, etc. And so all of these factors have to be uh, looked at in how to solve the problem. And so one thing I've always looked at and some doctors told me is that whether uh, the state or, or s somebody has to get involved in case someone is severely ill or in a crisis situation because of an accident, 
whether you have a method to immediately fly them in to a trauma unit, which is Queens Hospital here in yeah. Honolulu, yeah. or uh, when there's a transfer of Maui Memorial to Kaiser, and it's going to be a community hospital, whether that evolves into a, a real trauma hospital. Like too. A regional trauma a regional hospital. Regional trauma. So people from the big island can just fly to Maui. Yeah, that'd be so, easier. Yeah, easier. Yeah. So I'm, I'm talking about somebody severely injured in a car accident, and they have a, a severely orthopedic uh, injury, they need to get taken care of right away. So that, I look at that personally as how do you solve that problem on a continual basis? You know? What about making it easier to practice medicine? You know, uh, I think a lot of doctors are leaving private practice for one reason or another. Part of it is the paperwork and the administrative hassle of running a small private practice. Uh, is there anything can be done to ease their administrative burdens? You know, I think that to uh, a great extent, you know, it's a matter of the, the medical profession dealing with the insurers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether it's uh, HMSA. Kaiser, of course, is an HMO. Their doctors are all basically within the Kaiser yeah. family, you yeah. know. But uh, the, the PPOs uh, that are with HMSA, that, you know, you have a choice to go to whoever you want to see, um, whether they can work something out. And then it's a balancing, because HMSA is trying to keep premiums down. I'm saying only HMSA. There are other uh, insurers as mm -hmm. well. And so uh, that's one way to do it. I don't know if the legislature um, can, can really get involved. There are certain issues that come up uh, that they tackle. But to, to tell uh, an insurer you have to reduce your paperwork by legislation, Hard to do that. That's, that's hard to do. Hard to do that. Yeah. And you know, this also, uh, it, it, it connects with what you were talking about originally, and that is the, uh, the repeal, possible repeal of Obamacare, because this is going to have oh. an effect too, um, <clears throat> possibly an effect on the neighbor islands, maybe a disparate effect on the neighbor islands. Yeah, and plus, you know, if, if uh, Obamacare gets repealed, and obviously they can't do a replacement, as far as I'm concerned, within a very short time, yeah. right? then, you know, what happens to the subsidies? And so if certain people can't get subsidies then and they can't really afford the insurance, then are these people going to lose their insurance? Yeah. Uh, uh, because they can't, they can't afford it anymore. And so you have all these problems. That could Jerry. be profoundly damaging to the social structure of the islands. Oh, oh yes. And you yes. could have, you know, and a lot of the homeless are ordinary middle class people who yes. couldn't afford medical bills right. one way or another. And, <clears throat> we'd have more of them. Right. And, you know, although we have prepaid health, right, you have to be employed, right, full-time or yeah. over 20 hours a week yeah. to get to get the employer to pay part of the uh, uh, your medical insurance. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a safeguard, but not for everybody. Yeah. Right? <clears> Hope <throat> for the good old days. <laughs> I, I, I know, yeah. And um, the other issue that we were just talking about a little earlier is, of course, you know that a medical marijuana dispensaries mm -hmm. uh, was passed and um, I think that uh, talking to some of the legislators involved in health care I think they're going to tweak a little bit of the the existing law they're, they're constantly trying to fine-tune the law what's the tweak so, do you know so I'm not sure what the tweaks going to be um, but you know as as the dispensaries uh, you know are starting up if they have any issues they'll go and see the legislators and say, you know, we, we have, we're having this problem. You think we can change the law to do this and that? And I think legislators will listen to that. And of course, one of the, the big problems is the federal law is still, um, uh, you know, ma makes it illegal. So and that's not likely to change in the next not, administration. Yes. And you have the money situation that you can't go to a federally uh, insured bank. So even with uh, uh, when the dispensaries are paying their tax, Right, you don't have a bank account, so you're going to have to truck over cash to the tax department. All so kinds that, of issues. That creates a different set of issues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was interesting. It, it was very exciting. About a year ago, I um, I uh, participated in a panel on this subject oh, yeah. at the <clears> law school. But you know, since then, since all of this process, 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 not a single joint has been sold. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the way, that people think oh, everybody's going to be go around smoking. I mean, the the ones that have a blue card 
a lot of them use the medical marijuana to create oils and other things. So like they have, uh, I talked to this one uh, person who has a blue card and, you know, prior to this grows his own and, you know, makes oil and rubs it on his knee and which is very painful and uh, it was injured. And that's the only thing he said that helps his pain. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things on the mainland, which is not actually permitted in the current law here, is uh, ingestibles. Oh, yes. And maybe that's a good tweak, actually. Yeah, and it depends. I think the concern uh, on the mainland, and even here it was raised that, uh, you know, they were selling candy and et cetera. And so they were saying, gee, what about the kids? You know, can, can they get access to this? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, were, they looked at that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, more to come on that. And, of course, there's, there's a whole... There's a whole scenario out there somewhere along the line, you know, there's going to be a push for recreational marijuana. Um, the question is, how much, how much time do we need to have the experience and the data to move to that phase? Yeah, I think people have asked me about that. And I said, you know, I think the trend across the country is to move in that direction. Whether that's going to happen, we'll have to wait and see, right? But um, I think that the legislators who were in favor of medical marijuana and dispensaries want to have a good deal of history as to how it worked, how the dispensaries worked, you know, what's going to happen to all the, the, the money, are the feds going to do anything differently? You know, so we just wait and see. Let me jump to one other uh, last issue with you, Bob, and that is energy. Ah. You know, we haven't had a lot of energy legislation, <clears> and <throat> right now I don't even know of anything that's coming on for this session, but, you know, one never knows. <laughs> until the last minute anyway. Do you know of any uh, energy bills that are coming on? We're having a program, a briefing to the legislature on the 12th next week, oh. uh, or rather this week. And um, really, and that's in the uh, Capitol Auditorium, by the way, at 1.30. Who, oh, you have, yeah. We have uh, half a dozen speakers, and the idea is to check up on some of the initiatives that have not happened, and the, then talk about whether they can continue. Th there will be some energy bills put in, several mm -hmm. energy bills. And <clears throat> I think Blue Planet, you know, uh, they want to put in certain bills uh, on, on some specific, some conceptual. Like, for instance, you know, if you have um, certain automobile f transportation fuel, for instance, all of that, you know, you change the, the mindset with transportation, uh, uh, transportation issues so that, you know, energy saving there et cetera, and then we, you know, they're, they're going to be bills put in. Well, year. the stakes are high, and we have to keep on yeah. moving, and the legislature keeps on, it needs to keep on refining and reforming and tuning things up yeah. so we can move, and that's a very important issue. Yeah. Bob, thank you so much for coming You're welcome. Down. Thank Great you for inviting me. Always Hope an we can enjoyment. do this again. Yeah, the yeah. same. Aloha and shinyin kwailo. Happy New Year. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>